Friends, there is an important dynamic to be found in the religious society of Friends in being made up of both individuals with our own promptings of love and truth in our hearts and as a community continually trying to find our shared direction. It is a tension from which I've seen great life and power burst forth and yet I've also seen it be a door to great barrenness and disconnectivity for us. This is an important tension that needs to be revisited by each of us. How do we reconcile our responsibilities to ourselves, but also to our communities, so that neither dominates the other? Are we each committed with unwavering openness to the new responsibilities to our communities, which may develop from this tension. We need to reconsider the nature of relationships that are asked of us as part of what it means to be in this continuing act of creation, which is Quaker community, which shifts us beyond a surface living into the depth and power of the spirit In Quaker Faith and Practice 2348, Parker J. Palmer questions us on this. How can I learn the sanctity of each life unless I live in a community where we can be persons, not roles to one another? Parker J. Palmer is pointing to the intimacy required in how we share our lives. And I can often find myself so deeply craving that intimacy in the Quaker communities I am in. This craving is as deep in my heart as my yearning for the peace and fulfillment that often greets me in the silence of worship. Both seem a type of communion. How can our communities operate in the power to be found beyond shallow relationships, instead deepening into the seeking and fulfillment of love between us? Gatherings of Young Friends General Meeting are where I felt my life most empowered by this intimacy I seek. It is a rejuvenation of spirits which is characterized by what one elder there identified as the simplicity of just being together. I know that it is from just being together as something to strive for that everything astonishing bursts forth. For me, this has been from the gift of advice from older friends in times of spiritual dryness to the excitement of being young friends and covering a concern we feel led on together and our astonishment as it grows amongst us. There is something important in this simplicity of just being together, where love deepens between us and new life and direction seem to spring forth from. Just being together is a type of waiting we must maintain, is a type of discipline. How are we each making time amidst the challenges of the pandemic for the discipline and importantly, the simplicity of just being together? Whilst there seems a power to be found in just being together, I also wonder about the set forms of relationships urgently needed for our times. As a young Quaker, I've often reflected on what I need from my Quaker communities to move with confidence into that future, to change myself and the world around me, and to feel tooled to both inherit, but also shape the future of the religious society. 
the theme of mentorship and accompaniment has recurred strongly in my heart, which is only the restoration of something we have lost. Quaker Faith and Practice 2206 says, I wonder whether we do not need to rediscover the possibilities of a friendship in which the deepest areas of experience may be shared. Until this century, it was not uncommon for friends to travel in the ministry. Often they went out in pairs, one older, one younger. Their friendship became one in which they could open to one another, their struggles and failures, their hopes and visions when they became for each other the way through to the presence of God. My experience has been that this sort of mentorship has come in moments, but not in relationships of commitment. And what is friendship if not commitment to one another? And who will accompany me out of love if not you. What would our communities look like centered upon a rediscovery of mentorship and accompaniment between friends of differing ages? I once heard a young friend explain that the community to be found at gatherings of young friends general meeting showed him that this is how life could be and this is the same feeling I take from that community which has grown to feel like my family. His comment reminded me of how Quakerism often is challenging and contrary to the society we live in. And so what does this look like applied to our understanding of community? For me within Quakerism, the building of community is a destination of work in and for itself. It is also a mandate arising from our spirituality. It is the living out of love between us. And that intimacy becomes the thing which in, tool, which in turn tools and empowers us for our lives and work. It is the place where we shall address the viability of the religious society for the future. The biggest question is, how are we to live out an understanding of community that is uniquely ours and for this moment? 